everyone, welcome to Labor Lens. I am Sharon Ijasson. On this week's episode of the program, we will give you update information in the world of work and pay. But first, let's take the news. We will be right back. The Bayelsa State Government says staff verification exercise and reforms in the public service have greatly saved the state. Huge sums of money lost over the years to payroll fraud, ghost workers and age falsification by staff long overdue for retirement. While the state government has promised to look into genuine cases of affected persons, the Bayelsa Unemployed Graduates Forum welcomes the reforms at a solidarity march in support of the state government. We all know that if this civil service reform is being carried out successfully, it is going to employ a whole lot of jobless youth that are roaming the streets of Yenegua. That is the reason why we are here to support this reform process. And we want to say that all those people that are against this reform process, people should ask them critical questions if they genuinely enter the civil service through the right door. We are here to support the ongoing reform in the Civil Service Commission. As people, we have the right to seek employment from the state government. We are in support of the fact that people who are in their 70s should leave the system. We are very, very strong. We want to take, uh, take over from our parents. It is a win-win situation if the reforms succeed in the civil service and also in the Niger Delta University, Amasoma. There are a lot of age falsification process that is going on. We want to say the youth, we are ready to take care of our parents, not them to, to, to still be there to be giving us stipends. Yes. The youth, we are graduates because they don't want to live there. That is why we are still unemployed. So what the government is doing is to create vacancy for the youth. What Governor Dixon is doing in the civil service is something that will benefit the youth. Yes. And if a man is protecting your interests, you should be able to defend him as well. Dixon, we are saying that you should go ahead. Don't be intimidated. God will protect you. God will see you through to make sure that you carry out this process so that the youth will be employed in Bayelsa State. Political leaders in this state over the years and leaders of the civil service over the years have filled in names of their unborn children and aged parents and relations known and unknown earning salaries without coming to work. They know the people who do not come to work but they prefer to allow those names to stay on our payrolls and collect salaries and use these our hard-working young graduates as part-time workers, paying them peanuts. I almost shed tears when I interacted with a number of them this morning. That nonsense in this state has to stop. The Bayelsa governor shares more shocking revelations from the civil service. We have fished out over 500 of such people with questionable uh, academic credentials. We have contacted all the schools to confirm. Another list has been forwarded to me. I've received preliminary briefings that close to another 500 have been identified. So in all, we are talking of about, about close to 1,000. I've directed the head of service and the chairman of the Civil Service Commission a fresh recruitment process in this state in the next two weeks, once they are ready with their documentation, we will start with about a thousand young graduates. Governor Dixon urges unemployed graduates from the local governments to apply when the recruitment process commences. He, however, ruled out prosecutions blaming anomalies in the workforce on the rot in the previous system. They will write the examination. I want to build and leave behind an effective, competent, disciplined civil service. A 
familiar tune in organized labor and one that often heralds another season of fuel scarcity when sung by unions in the oil and gas industry. Once again, Nubank is bracing up for yet another strike aimed at pressing for better welfare and remuneration packages for its members. And driving this latest agitation is the Port Harcourt zone of Nubank, which identified 12 companies as defaulters. Affected locations include Rivers, Bayelsa, Cross River, Akwaibom, Benue, and all five states of the southeast. The unionized members of Nubank have a subsidiary collective bargaining agreement, CPA document, duly endorsed between the management and the union. And if there are areas of friction between management and the employees in the workplace, the best alternative could have been to engage the union and explore every other means of uh, negotiation. But the company, unfortunately, failed to tow this uh, line. And Without recourse to the existing CBA between the union and the management, they come on ahead and terminate the appointment of about three, more than 300 of our members on board or the DPC, OES. So consequently, after the resolution in our meetings, we hereby give seven days ultimatum to OES, DPC offshore, and other anti union companies, which have also observed within the period, they have also practiced activities that are not in line with the labor arts as a shrine in Nigerian constitution. Nupeng called for urgent intervention by government to avert the looming industrial action. Based on this development, we are directing all the tanker driver in the Eastern Zonal Council of Nupeng all the pump attenders in the Eastern Zonal Council of Nupen, all the drilling workers in the industry in the Eastern Zonal Council of Nupen, after seven days, if there is no counter report, should embark on indefinite action. What I mean by that, they should withdraw their service. Nupeng says the national body would be compelled to declare a nationwide action soon if nothing is done to address the issues within its Port Harcourt zone. Uh, maybe he's talking from his own, uh, from his own, own uh, point of view, but that is not the view of Nigerian workers. He has promised the whole Nigerian workers that by the third quarter of this year, everybody will start to receive this minimum wages or a minimum wages. But and we so much rely on that. So, but for them now to, for him now to come around and say, maybe he said maybe. He did not say it is not factual. He just said maybe. And that maybe can be another thing. And the NSC has given him ultimatum that maybe if there is no minimum wage this year, there will not be election in 2019. It will be calamitous to the government because workers will resist vehemently if the government reach that idea first. The minister who said it happened to be the vice president of the committee set up by the government. And you have seen the reactions of the national level leaders against that statement. And at the ILO convention in Geneva, it was also involved that should anything tamper with that minimum wage of a thing, all the workers in the whole system. In fact, there's a movement now that may become generated. July 2nd, that all workers, both not formal and formal, should sit at all. Which, if it materializes, you will see the action by July 2. Not to talk of evil, not to collect. That is what they are envisaging. So there is no point for any government to say they are not going to pay.